Okay, so let's create the clock app that's going to tell us the time of the day when we load the page. So I'm going to start from the scratch, like I mentioned. I'm going to create a new directory called clock app, and this is where all my code is going to go. In this clock app, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call the file index.html, and this is where my main HTML is going to go. Uh, this has nothing right now, but let's verify that by changing my path uh, so that I can load that HTML. So this is going to be clock app slash index.html, and it's empty. So as we fill in the code here and refresh the browser here, we should be able to see the code in action. Now within this index.html, I'm just going to put some uh, skeleton HTML code, which is basically HTML open close with the head and body. All of them are empty. Uh, now I am going to add an h1 over here and say clock app, which is going to be the title. And then I'm also going to do a, a title in the head. Don't actually have to do this, but it's it's a good thing to do. And now if I were to refresh the page, well, here is our clock app, which really doesn't do anything yet. So we need to create an Angular application which has a controller that gets the current system time when the page loads and then displays it in the view, right? So how do we go about this? We looked at how the first step to creating an Angular application is to import the Angular script. I can do this in a couple of ways. I can link it to the CDN or I can link it to a local file in my file system. I already have the local file over here, so I'm just going to copy this and paste it into my clock app path so that it's over here. And now I can use the script tag to link to the Angular script that's in that same location. src equals, and then the name of the file is angular.js. I close the script tag, and now with this, I have an Angular application. But what I need to do next is to add ng app and link it to our module. By creating an ng app over here, I'm still going to do this in the HTML. Now I have an Angular application, but it's not linked to any module yet. So I'm going to create a script block where I do all the module initialization. I'm going to do this at the end of the body tag. So it's a script over here. And then inside this, I'm going to call the Angular, the global Angular object, and uh, access a method on top of it called module. And then this module, method has two arguments. One is the name of the module, clock app, and then it's going to be an empty array, right? I'm going to hold on to this in a variable called app. Let me collapse this so that we have more real estate here. All right, so I have created an Angular module called clock app, and uh, it has this uh, empty array as a second argument. Now I have my application over here. Next, what I'm going to do is use the controller method on the app on the module to register a new controller. And what do I want the controller to do? I want the controller to get the current system time. So I'm going to create a function here, which is going to get the current system time. And then uh, let me implement that a bit later. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say app dot controller, and then this again takes two parameters. First is the name of the controller time CTRL, and then the second is the name of the function that you want to bind it to, which is again time CTRL. So this doesn't have to be the same as this, but this has to be the same as this, right? Here you're referring to the actual function that you're making as a controller, so that has to match. All right, so now I have registered the controller I have to actually implement the logic. So what's the logic to get the system date? The date API is basically saying new date. So I can say var current date equals new date. And this is going to give me the date object in JavaScript. And then I can get the time uh, using var time string equals and date dot two times string. So this is the API in JavaScript to get the time as a string. So with this, now I have a string, which is the current system time. 
Okay, so we need to somehow convey this to the view, right? So before we do this, let's hook all these things up. I have created an application, clock application. I need to link it to ng app so that Angular knows that you are actually creating this app as the clock app, right? So you need this module to be registered so that whenever you use ng controller in the application, it knows which module to look for that controller, right? So now that it knows that this is the module, when I use the ng controller, let me do this in a div. So I'm gonna have a div and say ng dash controller equals, and then I need to give the controller as the name that I've registered it as. Not the name of the function, the name that I've registered the controller as. So here it is time CTRL. And now I have a div with ng controller. Now I wanna display the current time over here. How do I do this? Now I have the time string in the controller. I need to somehow display this in the view. Can I do something like this? I say a paragraph ng dash bind equals time string. Would this work? Well, this wouldn't work because guess what happens every time you do an ng bind? Angular does a scope dot for the expression. So here you're doing time string. Angular is going to do a scope dot time string. It's going to do it no matter what. So you don't, you cannot control it. So the best way to show this is, you know, you still got to use ng bind. But what you need to do is you need to put this time string on the scope. You need to create a property on the scope called time string so that when Angular does scope dot time string, it has the value for it to use. So this thing needs to be set as a property on the scope. Now, in order to do that, I need to first get the scope. How do I get the scope? I do dependency injection. I don't look the scope up. I say, hey, Angular, give me the scope. And the way to do this is by using a special token called dollar scope as a method argument to my controller. When I do something like this, when Angular executes this function, because of this ng controller, right? Angular says ng controller, time controller, time controller is this function. Okay, now I've got to execute this. It sees this dollar scope. So it injects the scope here. So I have the scope available. Now, what I need to do now is instead of having it as a variable, I need to set it as a property of the scope. So I say dollar scope dot time string, not a var time string. Okay, so with this, I have set the property of the scope when the controller executes. And now when ng controller sees this thing, it makes sure this function executes and the scope has this property. Now when ng bind executes, it does a scope dot time string, which you already set. So it should give us the current time. All right, so let's test this out by refreshing the page. Well, here you see it is printing the current system time, but it's showing at the top because what I've done here is I have added it to the head. So let me move this to the body. You don't want to add code in the head. All right, now I have this in the body tag below the H1, which is where it should have been all along. Now, if I refresh, well, here you see the current system time. And now as I refresh this, it's changing. So it's showing the current system time in my location with the time zone. It's 11 a.m. right now on a really nice Saturday morning. So that's what's happening. When I refresh the page, it continues to update. All right, so with this, we have a complete time slash clock application. So I can have something like the current system time is and not do an ng bind. Instead, I can do something like this. Current time is, and then I can do time string. So I get a little bit more descriptive message, All right? So this was the exercise. Hopefully doing this whole thing from the scratch makes things a little bit simple. I hope you also give it a try. If not, definitely do and uh, check the solution if you're stuck.